It was a Tuesday in March 2001, a regular work day, or so I thought. I was about six weeks pregnant with my son. I got up as usual and made breakfast for my eight-year-old daughter. I packed her lunch and dropped her off at the babysitter, who would walk her to school. I then set out to catch the bus that would take me to work. That was my last clear memory of that morning. Next thing I knew, I was waking up in a hospital bed with no memory of how I got there. Later, I was told that I had a seizure on the bus. Bell hit my head and was transported by ambulance to the hospital. Before that week was out, I had several more seizures and was readmitted to the hospital. Because I was pregnant, the doctor could not perform any tests to confirm why I was having those seizures but ultimately described my seizures as epileptic in nature. Every attempt was made to control my seizures with medication. I was put on Dilantin and Tegretol and was under special doctor's care to monitor my pregnancy. It wasn't until my son was born eight months later that test was finally performed. Three months after my son's birth, I was diagnosed with epilepsy. I was distraught with the news and hated everything that came along with epilepsy. I'm not sure what I thought the diagnosis would be, but somehow I never imagined it would be epilepsy. However, I, it wasn't like I was stranger to epilepsy. My earlier glimpse of epilepsy came to my dad. I still remember how terrifying it was for my entire family when my dad started to experience these traumatic seizures. I was paralyzed with the fear that I could lose him at any moment. I never thought I would ever have to witness the same fear in my children's eyes. When I was diagnosed, I was having many seizures and needed to be hospital hospitalized. It was then that I started to have negative thoughts. Thoughts like, I want to die. One day, I even found myself on the balcony railing. I'm not sure how I got there, but were it not for, many, for some neighbors in the other opposite building who called 911, I might not be standing here today. I, sp I felt spiritually weak, but then I found out that one of the negative side effects of Tegretol is suicidal thoughts. That day, I was admitted to the hospital and saw a psych psychiatrist who prescribed antidepressant. But as soon as I was released, I stopped taking the medication. You see, I quickly learned there was a stigma in the black community. According to some of my family members, black people don't get depressed. If I stopped taking the medication out of fear of what my friends and family would think, and although I was crying a lot, maybe this stigma is why I didn't label my emotion as depression. With my family mentality, how could I even begin a conversation about how I was feeling? I was overwhelmed. Suddenly, there were, these seizures put me in the spotlight. I continued to deny my depression. I could not see it, did not want to see it. A breakthrough for my epilepsy came when my neurologist, Dr. George Fitz, referred me to Epilepsy Toronto. I still remember her calling me at home and insisted that I contact this agency. I was very reluctant as I did not want anyone to know that I was connected to such a place. After all, it would mean fully acknowledging that I had epilepsy and that my life had changed. It took me about six months before I finally decided to pay them a visit. Once I took that trip, I realized that I found a place where I did not have to feel embarrassed or worried. If I had a seizure or if I'm feeling depressed, there were heaven where I could freely express my feelings and concern without being judged. I received private counseling for my seizures and mood, joined support and recreational group and was provided with many resources. Their unrelenting encouragement and advocacy for the rights dignity and well-being of every person with epilepsy in the GTA is second to none. If you are going through a similar journey, connecting with your local epilepsy agency is something I would recommend. But although I had finally started to accept the fact that I had epilepsy, 
I was still start struggling with feeling of depression. Thanks to Facebook, I knew when my friends were out socializing without me. They told me they were afraid I would have an episode during one of our outing, which would embarrass them publicly. They also said that they couldn't handle my mood swings. I couldn't handle it either. My family and friends felt it was safer for me to be in the house. I felt trapped. I experienced hair loss and dry skin due to my meds. This made me feel less feminine. I would sometimes wake up from a seizure to find myself alone at home, knowing that before my seizure, I wasn't alone. So people would actually walk out on me in the middle of my seizures. I love fashion, baking, and cooking, but when I get depressed, I completely shut down, did nothing. I would even miss doctor's appointment. A breakthrough for my depression came when my neurologist, Dr. Tai, referred me to a psychiatrist at Toronto, Toronto Western Hospital. Here in the care of Dr. Ali and Dr. Mazouz, I was able to be honest and open about some of the things that was weighing me down. This helped me to start dealing with some of the issues I was having and to start taking my medication as prescribed. This was a first step in my journey to deal with and acknowledge my depression. Sometimes, sometimes my depression came in cycles. For example, after I have had a few seizures and now that I'm going through menopause and living alone, yes, living alone. So how do I cope with depression? I have finally discovered about six key things that work well for me. First, I use mood cycle worksheet to write about how I'm feeling. My, doc my doctor gave me the tool, but it was provided by Epilepsy Toronto. Once a month, my Epilepsy Toronto counselor, Rosie Smith, helps me reflect on the thoughts and moods that I'm facing that day and identify strategies to change things. Sometimes I'm not able to fill out the entire worksheet, but afterwards, I always feel more positive about whatever I have written down. At home, I keep working on the worksheet until I can fill it all out. Second, I keep a journal by my bedside to write down what is depressing me at this time. I record my feeling, how long I'm feeling down, and my deepest, most private thoughts. I reread my journal when I'm feeling better so I can better manage my depression the next time around. The third thing that helped me is baking. I don't like baking from a recipe. I prefer to experiment with healthy ingredients I have on hand. I now make in delicious squares, cakes, and other treats from grains like quinoa, bulgur, and couscous. Planning and blending ingredients suits me. It makes the pain so much less. Fourth, it's volunteering. I volunteer with Jess for Success, which is an organization that helps women who have been out of the workplace for a long time and can't afford a new wardrobe. With Dress for Success, I get to be around fashion, which I love. It fills me with light and allow me to give back. Play It Forward is another group I work with, and here I get to cook for seniors, and of course I volunteer with Epilepsy Toronto. Fifth is spending time with positive people, like my children and my best friend, Alana Jackson and being in my church. And six is doing activities like yoga, Zumba, and line dancing, all of which I, put, I just started and doing a few months ago. These activities are outside my comfort zone, but I'm loving it. Today, many people ask me what brought my smile back. I answer with an even broader smile. It's about acceptance. My name is Wendy Morris, and I'm living with epilepsy and depression. I stand here not in denial, but instead with a determination and resolve to live life to its fullest, despite the up and down. Along the way, I realize that I'm not alone on this journey. I laugh every moment that I can because I have learned to treasure life regardless of the challenges that I have overcome and are yet to come. It is often difficult for people with epilepsy and depression to talk about what they are going through. I am here because I choose not to be silent by this fear. I choose to speak even though a seizure could disrupt my presentation. 
I am doing this to help educate those who are unaware of the impact of depression and epilepsy and to encourage those who have just started this journey or who are still struggling with accepting it. If you are struggling, this is what I would say to you. Find coping strategies that work for you and only you. Persevere. You will have ups and downs, as I do. Although I have lost friends along the way, I have gained stronger friends, especially in the epilepsy community. One of my closest friends has, has six different types of seizure. She's a social worker who has, a, who has weeks when she can't go to work, yet she keeps at it. She motivates me to live my life to the fullest against the objection of many around me. I made a decision to separate from my husband. I needed to find my happiness again. My dad did not show allow epilepsy to impede his life. He held a job in government service for over 30 years and lived a very full life. With my faith and belief in something higher than myself, a great support system is Epilepsy Toronto and my, to and my coping tools. I have a positive outlook on my future. Thank you. <laughs>